Okay, <clears throat> let's begin with today's wreath. Um, I haven't been using these for quite some time, so let's try them. I have a Hans, one Wahong, I have a Raphael Kulinski, and I have a, I don't know, generic brush. So let's see what we can paint today. I, if you have questions, just let me know. I'll see if I can answer them along the way. I'm using a um, art philosophy set of palettes today. And hopefully, so these are the colors that I'll be playing with. Okay, and maybe a few blues and greens. Alrighty. So, as you know, I love, as in, I love making wreaths. Ooh, I like how this paintbrush is able to receive the color. Wait, there's a little piece of hair at the end. So anyway, um, you're supposed to see strokes wherein tip, side, and then back to tip make different petal um, strokes. And then I'm just adding water, no paint. This way, the outer layers or outer petals are lighter. And generally, that's how this is how. Uh, roses and flowers are the farther they are from the center the lighter they are okay so let's see and this is a good time to have what Filipinos well not all some believe as pasma wherein there is a shaking of the hand <laughs> and um, it so it's acceptable during this time to be pasmado. So let's see. Um, depending on where the, the the center is of your flower, that's where the uh, darkest part is. Okay, so I'm just pulling paint from some areas like this one, and then I'm just bringing them out to the outermost sections of the. Oh, that needs a lot of water. Quick. Okay, so part of being an artist, I guess, is knowing when to stop. <laughs> when to stop. When to stop. And that is um, the age-old question. When do you stop? When does it look good already? When do you stop? Trying to hope it gets better. Hey, who got? <laughs> Anyways, so here's one flower. Um, I can return to that later. I will move on. Let's move the uh, colors nearby since I can. Okay, so um, it's official. I don't want to use this one anymore. It's called hands, and it's not giving me the coverage I want. Reject. So I'm transferring to another brush at this late stage. Oops, sorry, I moved the. Uh, how do you say the camera? I'm going to go to my favorite, and it is the silver black velvet i don't know if you can see it from here but comfort zone okay so i'm just adding water i'm not going to add more paint so some are one wondering what paper i'm using i'm just using student grade which means my paintings can still get better. It's just that I bought a lot during the 
first um, uh, lockdown and I don't know we are at our second so and um, I just want to finish all the student grade paper it's also because I was accepting um, on-site online classes and so the student grade paper was going to be for them but that's okay I love I love painting so whatever comes out is it okay what I'm doing now is just um, moving across the paper and I'm letting the paint run into each other I don't mind um, some have asked me why I paint the same stuff and I'm going to be very philosophical now and say that painting the same stuff although give it it gives me almost the same well I, I always get a wreath at the end right but it gives me such joy however temporary but if I practice feeling joy every so often this feeling translates to happiness over time so joy 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 plus more joy becomes happiness and I want to look back for example at or on the month of March and remember that I had very happy memories about it so paintings successes however small however repeated they are successful and it makes me feel better so um, for those who have not joined our tools for change and mindset reset workshops and uh, I have to repeat that they are free we are paying it forward you know um, information that is stored and not shared or used or executed is really just a waste right so um, my friend and I shout out to Tin Reina we are giving out giving web shop w workshops that are workshops so web shops um, please join us the next one is March 28th okay so I am practicing what I preach and what I've been preaching is that we all need to have sacred space sacred time sacred things that we do to make us happy okay it doesn't need to be a long or lengthy moment but just that there is such a moment that you can call your own revives you reboots you makes you want to face life again because if life is too dull or challenging all the time or stressful all the time who wants to wake up to that right so there uh, you'll notice that I pretty much do the same strokes so these these are still C strokes and they just go round and round around the paper I'm also into calligraphy so unbeknownst to you I write mottos and passages and letters in the middle of all these wreaths and I give them to friends during special occasions or I give them as gifts when I am um, when I am at my my uh, speaking engagements so I'm moving I'm moving the paint because there's too much so I, this is what you call lifting okay and I've also maintained that you don't need very expensive paints to get into the painting habit 
Okay, what I'm doing now is dropping. So while the paint is wet, I'm dropping another color onto it. So this is also called wet on wet. It's a technique that does a lot of magical stuff <laughs> for paintings. And um, it would do you well to remember these techniques and technique names because sooner or later you may use them okay come on why don't you get your kids paint sets and start painting really fun really into the moment okay so oh i get this question a lot what if you make a mistake? There are no mistakes. Look, I haven't made one. Because I don't treat them as mistakes. Huh? It's all in your mind when you say it's a mistake. Um, I have no... I have no plan. When I paint these, meaning it's intuitive what I do. Or how it will be formed. Therefore, I am not tied to any expectation regarding the look or the form and when I paint and realize that it looks lopsided or incomplete I just smile and let go okay so this is another therapeutic technique wherein you realize it's just a painting it's okay to make mistakes. The mistakes actually make it nice. The mistakes make it different, unique. Um, so I'm moving to another section of the paper just so I don't um, uh, hit it with, with my palm and destroy what could be a very fantastic looking wreath when I'm done with it. <clears throat> so it's okay to make mistakes and it's how to cover that mistake or how to accept it or how to react to that mistake or how to um, make sure it doesn't happen again that's where the learning comes from so if you're not mistake full how can how can there be feedback and correction right right so so far so good i am i am going to build or i'm going to start at the center here because well because i can there is no right or wrong to these types of paintings so i just do it Imagine how nice to practice this feeling of freedom. And, oh, you see this? Oh, that sucks. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and wet it. And then I'm going to use a tissue paper and lift it there. Okay. So... I don't feel bad. You know why? Because I'm going to make another one of these soon. And that will be too immaterial or too small a matter to matter. See? This is what you practice. You practice feeling stuff so that when it happens again, it doesn't blindside you or it doesn't make you want to quit or cry or freeze up. or you know turn violent just keep just keep at it you'll be surprised as to um what can happen when you try um that is a preschool tenet and it's still very useful to any age group ok 
Okay, so it's in the trying that that you mature and that you learn and that you just make decisions for the future. Okay, so I will move away from blue first. And let's see what I come up with. I just mixed whatever blue I had on my um what's this on my brush into the red that was on the palette it's it's nice not to waste so um we make do we use what we can so if you were to use the colors that were strictly on this palette you will come up with very nice um color combinations because art philosophy thought of it or thought of the combination for you but what if and i love using what ifs what if you find or discover a new color combination wouldn't that be wouldn't that be fun wouldn't that be you know we will call it the araneta <laughs> we will call it the rosan so have all the color combinations in the world been discovered oh i like this it has a tinge of blue here and there It's almost green at some part. And I started with the brown. Nice. See? I'm discovering new color combinations. And there are small pieces of hair that are leaving. Okay, let's move on. So, for those watching, May I know why you're still watching? What is interesting? What should I do? Should I shut up? Should I speak more? Is my volume just right? Okay. I'm lifting paint. There's just too much of it, I think. There. And then I will drop. this color there okay moving on let's go for this red Okay, and then when you practice, because the, the topic here is practicing, when you practice and you realize that things are too wet, you'll never know when things are too wet if you don't, you know, figure these out by doing. So knowing that's wet, panindigan, keep going, cover it. <laughs> okay, I'll move here and continue on very interesting that was supposed to be an orange but it became brownie Which is okay, of course. So I leave white spaces. The white spaces are there to suggest highlights, to suggest portions that are 
touched by light. In other words, Excuse me. See strokes. Add water. Let's move here, that's very wet already. Typically, a flower would have about five petals. So when you are doing your strokes, you might want to space out your strokes and ensure that five of them can fit at one time I I, I uh, tend to have four petaled flowers but that's okay okay let's work with whatsoever's on the palette now let's use this it's almost pink now it has turned into a uh, maybe an old rose when it hits paper let's find out Yeah, old rose mocha, and I'm just adding. So I'm dropping here near the center. Okay, so those who want to learn how to do this, we can do a one on one or a group class. Um, I for the during the pandemic. I've been doing a lot of wedding showers or bridal showers this way uh, out of the ordinary, right? Very different from the typical drinking ones or the ones with um, strippers, yeah? So, if you'd like to learn something new, something that can help your self-care but something that can add to your rituals because remember you need to help yourself first first you must be first for you otherwise there won't be anything left to give okay so be there for you Let's see, I'm going to move the paper around and I will go to the spots that need um, beefing up, like this area. Okay, so that brush was just very dry. I'm just loading more paint. <laughs> and this brush is very wet. So just a suggestion that there's something underneath. Maybe yeah, just adding water. I will go here. Soon I will be doing the leaves. Okay, so I'm moving back here. This portion needs beefing up so to speak and what color should it be i'm deciding uh, we 
we've done orange how about a little a little bit more yellow than orange ah, I know we'll add a little beige back here to the long end Water Melanie, make a little red. Okay, it's now tangerine, but we're okay. <coughs> Excuse me. And a fourth petal. So when you cover the colors underneath, that's called glazing. And um, that wasn't as successful as I wanted it to be, but it will have to do. And I'll just introduce tangerine here and there because I don't want it to... <clears throat> appear just once it needs to be a recurring theme that way even if your colors don't match or good don't go together <clears throat> excuse me it at least feels like it belongs okay so what are you doing this sunday Alrighty, now that I'm done with the colors, I'm off to make the, the leaves. Hold on, I'm moving things around. So I'm going to be using this other palette of uh, art philosophy. It happens to be called Currents. Very pretty greens. And I'm going to put this here as a guide so I know which ones I'm, I'm going to use. Alright, here we go. Cleaning the brush, a little. Wetting the palette, a little. Mm, let's use them all. Okay, let's start with this green. Since this is a happy green, let's go put a, a, a leaf on this rose. Remember, our flowers are seen aerially. Can you say that? Uh, you know, from on top. So the point of view is you're looking straight down. And that's why, if you can imagine, any uh, leaf peeping out from underneath the rose would would be a would be a triangle in shape. Okay, so I'm just evenly spacing out the leaves. Nothing major. Returning to spots that need returning to. Okay, I'm adding a, a little blue to the wet spots nearest the petal and that's to make the red pop better. Okay, so 
so I'm moving the paper around. Since this is an ugly color, why don't I liven it somehow? <laughs> I don't know if I can, but let's go with an apple green or a lime green. Lime green. Just to balance the, the not so great color combination. So maybe you would look at the green instead of the rose petals. Okay, so far nobody's asking me questions, but that's okay. I mean, or just in case you have a <clears throat> life-related question, I'll answer. <laughs> That's for that green. I'm moving paper around. Let's go for a Turkish C. Oh, that's really dark. Hold on. Let's water that down. I used to be very um, anal about how triangular these leaves would be. Now, it's okay to be, how do you say it, a little um, spotty. Okay, this is tissue from a fast food and I'm going to lift paint from over here because it's just too bright there you go so I'm turning this around I'm just going to work with the roses first and if your flower is for example light like this one as it should be because it is supposed to be transparent um, because there should be more water than color in a watercolor then the dark color which is now the green by contrast is actually the one defining the shape of the flower not not the, the petals so by contrast contrast is the way to define stuff so how happy are you you can only know by how sad you have become and that's the only way you can measure see I like tying in the philosophical stuff when I'm painting. Okay. Today's painting has a lot of um, has a lot of greens. I'm actually very surprised with myself. I don't usually. I'm no, not, not greens, my mistake. Um, rose petals or roses. I don't usually put this many in one painting. But there's always a, mm, there's always a day like today to find exceptions or to, to do the exceptional 
So I've worked with all the roses so far. I have colored them. I'm sorry, I, I have leafed them. So now I'm bringing out this. I'm, I'm going back to this one. This is the Terrain, or sorry, my mistake, Terrain. Terrain um, palette. And there are some greens here that I will use now just to not think anymore and just paint. Okay, so if it's a dark petal, I will use a light green. Since there are some blues that are similar, I will use the same green. What are you thankful for? I usually am calm enough to be able to meditate on that question. I'm grateful for the pandemic, if that's a way to uh, look at stuff. I am grateful that there is time to paint. There's time to work, and then there's time to paint. There's time to eat. There's food to eat. I will turn the page around. And since I pulled out dark, green I'm picking a light flower if you'll notice I turn my paintbrush around every so often and that's to make sure that all the paint gets dropped onto the paper and that the paintbrush does not get deformed It would be nice to have the same shapes of leaves for the same stem. Um, that's where calligraphy and an eye for the same angle, the same size, the same color would be very helpful. Okay. Dark red, 
Hmm, maybe here. Let's disrupt the uh, the lightness here and add a little contrast. Then we go back to some light work. Why am I quiet? Um, no reason really. Maybe I'm just in the zone and talking gets me out of my mood. If you have a question, you can ask. Thank you. And that was my my lunch call. <laughs> Corn beef 
or adobo. Adobo is a Filipino thing that we um, put together very quickly, but it's really yummy. Can be with beef, can be with, I'm sorry, can be with pork or chicken. And um, you add soy sauce and vinegar, sometimes, maybe, depending on what province you hail from, you can add coconut milk. And there is a variant of it wherein you add bagoong. Oh my gosh, I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. Is it raining in your part of uh, Metro Manila? It's it's um, drizzling here and it's really very romantic. How about here? Let's put some let's put some leaves on this side. It needs attention. Okay. And um so, so the question is when do you stop? When my gut tells me to stop? Um, another question is, do I sell? Yes. And I will do commissions as well. Um, I've done, I've done, um, wedding invitations. I've done baptismal invitations. Hmm, okay, so far... So far, most of the surfaces and um, sections are filled. So far. Okay. And the last thing I do is I add centers I mean to make it easily understandable I put pollen I put stamen stamens to the center of the flowers just so they they seem a little bit more put together and that would mean that I will reconstitute the darkest portions of the palette. So I will just add a purple and blue um, section and I will use this side or this this color to darken the center so excuse me most of the flowers that are already here.
you'll have to turn the brush around at some point just so it doesn't deform in, in, or it doesn't curve into one onto one side then again once you've um, dipped it in water it should reform into a tip and then of course when when I dry it I don't dry it in a in a container because it will set in a certain you know angle and considering how much brushes cost these days I'd like them to live as long as possible so even in the dabbing of the paint to make the dots it becomes very meditative it's a repetitious intended uh, thought process so it's not um, accidental it is not automatic I, I I really watch what I'm doing and that is very therapeutic for me and then just um, going back to spots that I have already done reviewing what I've uh, done so far and you know looking happy happily at these flowers they give joy okay have I gone through all the flowers no I've noticed just here this one didn't look didn't turn out right so I'm going to add to it There we are. This is today's work. I will move the camera up so you see more of it. And I will post this on YouTube. I will post this on Instagram and at www.rosanaraneta.com. I hope you enjoyed today's live video process. And please, please subscribe, like my channels. Thank you. Bye.